Hey, this is Cosmo with Solutions 8, and today I want to give you the ultimate guide to split testing ad copy uh, inside of Google Ads. Now, the first thing I'm going to preface with, this is actually really simple, uh, because it shouldn't be difficult. I think far too often we make split testing just this big, hairy beast that everybody's afraid of, and you overcomplicate it. And what's interesting about complicated split tests is they're actually really difficult to gather information from. So keep your split testing simple. Uh, expect the instructions I'm about to give you to be really simple. Um, and I'm prefacing with that, too, because I don't want you to feel let down. You know, if somebody leads with the ultimate guide to anything, you might, you know, think like, oh, okay, we're going to dive really deep. It's the ultimate guide because it's what works the best, but it's going to be really simple and easy to follow. So that's number one. Number two is um, you need to make sure that you're properly structuring your ad groups before you can split test ad copy. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's dive into a client's account. So um, I've got a client pulled up here. This is an office complex. We help them with their advertising. Um, there, think of a, a Regis if you're familiar with them. They offer, you know, shared offices, um, larger office suites if you have a lot of employees, virtual offices if you just want someone who answers your phone calls and collects mail for you. So multiple different services, um, in each very different uh, from the other. That's critically important here because if you had the same services bundled in one ad group, and you had ad copy that was speaking to, you know different services, even if the ad copy was speaking to all of the available services, but in different ways, you're not necessarily split testing ad copy. Now you're split testing what service that you offer. Uh, you're split testing the service that you offer and, and, and which one might be most popular or most relevant to the key keyword search or whatever. So uh, you have to make sure when you're split testing ad copy that the ad copy is um, analogous um, from a service perspective. Otherwise, you're not testing the copy, you're testing the service. So, uh, and honestly, it's just a good best practice in general. Your ad, your ad groups should be segmented according to the offering. Um, oftentimes, your ad groups could be segmented according to the way the offering is articulated. So it's the same offering, but people are searching for it in different ways. My business is a good example. We offer Google Ads management, but I've got one ad group for people that search for a PPC agency and another ad group for people that search for Google Ads agency, even though for me it's the same offering because the way that you're approaching me is a little bit different, so I speak to it a little bit differently. So as long as we're on the same page there, you have to make sure that your, your ad groups are properly segmented and you're speaking to a specific enough offering, then I have a template for you. This template comes directly from Google, by the way. This is something that our Google team shared with us. Normally, I'm a little... Uh, hesitant, let's say, of Google's recommendations, but this one ended up working out really well. And that's another rule that I follow, by the way, is when Google makes a recommendation, I just don't throw it out immediately. We we test it, but we also don't trust it immediately either. Um, you'll see what we have broken down here. We, we run two expanded text ads. So that's the uh, really important note. You run two expanded text ads and one responsive ad. Um, in case you're not familiar to, and I actually just did a video on how to write great ad copy. So you can go watch that video and it talks more about the expanded text ads, but the expanded text ads are the ads that you're probably used to creating. Um, these are the ones where you come up with the headline, you come up with the descriptions. Um, the responsive search ads are, it's like handling, uh, handing Google, a, a, a you know, box of, of Legos and then Google constructs the ad from the material that you provided it. So you give it, you know, a collection of different headlines, a collection of different descriptions, and then Google's going to construct the ad accordingly. Now, this is interesting because generally split tests, split tests have also been referred to A-B tests. And um, usually people's inclination is to test two things against each other. So you have A and B. Uh, the split test here is testing three things against each other. And one of those things is different in terms of constructs. So you're testing two expanded text ads and one responsive ad. So it's, it's, you would be forgiven for thinking, well, I should text, test one set of responsive ads versus another set of responsive ads. Um, but the way that Google is testing the ads against each other is built out so that the responsive search ads that you're providing Google are manifested as their own kind of expanded text ads post um, display. And I didn't say that very well, forgive me. Really what I'm getting at is you're looking at this thinking, oh, I've got, you know, expanded text ad, expanded text ad, and then responsive search ad. That's not what you have. You have expanded text ad, expanded text ad, and then 57 different variations of expanded text ads. So just because you think this is a responsive search ad, the way that Google is displaying this is, and you know, God only knows how many different variations there are depending on how many headlines and descriptions you offer up. Um, Google is basically just creating its own uh, sets of expanded text ads. Uh, what it's doing here uh, is benchmarking its own testing against what you've been able to come up with. 
Uh, and then I also think, I have no way of proving this whatsoever, but I think that Google's taking cues. So it's taking title cues, it's taking description cues, it might be taking you know order, sequence, segment, whatever. Um, again, there's, there's zero indication that that's the truth other than just my own intuition, but um, knowing what I know about the way that they function, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, so when you're running these two expanded text ads, make sure that they're different enough to uh, allow for an adequate split test. The responsive search ad is gonna take care of that itself because you're coming up with all these different headlines and you're coming up with all these different descriptions. Um, with the expanded text ads, you're gonna wanna make sure that they're different enough to uh, allow for uh, a, a proper split test. So what I like to do is I build my expanded text ads first um, and then make sure I have really distinct variations, variation A, variation B, and then uh, I'll include just about everything, titles and descriptions um, that I came up with in responsive search ads plus any, any discards that I have. So, and you know, you like to brainstorm and whiteboard, so you can throw everything at the responsive search ad. Google's really good at figuring out what's working and what's not. What's really interesting is sometimes the responsive search ads, when you see the way that they're displayed, they're semi-nonsensical. You know, I mean, they'll put titles together that don't necessarily flow quite as well as you think that they should, but, you know, in, in, a, in a twist of fate that scares me for my job, the responsive search ads win as often as not, at least 51% of the time. Um, so Google's machine learning is writing ads for us and winning. They're beating brilliant marketers, uh, which again is really interesting. And I think that's because Google knows what's going to resonate with a prospect. Um, we've talked often about Google's, you know, they have 70 million demographic and psychographic profiling factors that they're using in order to catalog who a human being is. So it makes sense that they understand, you know, different verbs that would resonate with you versus somebody else, or, you know, the, the just the, the tone that you like to hear, or, um, you know, what, what type of call to action might um, uh, appeal to you, et cetera. Um, so don't be surprised when the responsive search ad wins, but don't bank on it either, because sometimes the expanded text ad wins. Uh, from a split testing perspective, I like to split test titles first. So you can actually keep your descriptions the same um, and simply test titles against each other. Uh, if you change the description, that's, that's perfectly fine as well. The reason I like to segment it out personally is because then I know um, what title's better. Uh, it's a control group. So if I have the same description on both, but the titles are different and you know one ad wins over the other, I now know which titles are better. And then I might uh, clone the titles and then uh, split test the descriptions against each other. I've noticed that split tested descriptions tend not to have enough of a, of a variation um, to really yield tangible results unless you're spending a lot because people don't spend quite as much time with the descriptions as they do with the titles. So um, if your budget isn't expansive, then it's the titles that you're really looking to split test, not necessarily just, um, you know, anything a little bit more nuanced. Uh, and of course, and this should always go without saying, anytime you're building ad copy, you have to have extensions built out, um, which doesn't necessarily play into your split testing as much as it just plays into the fact that if you want your ads to show at all, um, and you want your quality score to be adequate and you want, you know, uh, um, a solid at bat with these prospects that are searching for you, make sure that you have ad extensions in play. So this is the guide you're running. You're always running two expanded text ads, one responsive search ad until you see what wins. And once you have a winner on your hand, go ahead and feel free to, to, you know, rebuild a brand new test using the same, um, three, uh, ad type cadence. Um, anytime you change an ad, even adding a piece of punctuation completely wipes the data on that ad. So. Um, don't make any changes. Don't tinker until you have definitive winners. And Google's pretty good at finding definitive winners. Also, don't worry about um, don't worry about reaching arbitrary thresholds. If you notice that Google is heavily delivering one ad over the other, and you're still only you know you're sub 100 clicks, that's okay. That means that Google just decided, hey, this one's the winner, um, and it feels like it has enough information to do that. And I generally believe Google in those times. And even if I don't. The machine is going to prioritize the ad that it likes most anyway. So, you know, it doesn't behoove me to, to try to fight that, um, you know, unless there's a really strategic reason that I want to, in which case that should just be embedded in all my ad copy. So I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, hit me in the comments. I read every comment personally. I respond to every comment personally. Give me a little thumbs up if uh, you liked what I had to say. If you want to see me every day, subscribe and uh, you'll get a notification straight to your inbox. And... We actually do this for a living. So if you want help running Google Ads, you don't want to do it yourself. You just want to go find a professional and you know hand it over. Uh, please reach out to us. We offer free action plans on all Google Ads campaigns. If you're an agency, we have a phenomenal white label program that I think you'll be really impressed by. Um, and that's all the selling I'm going to do today. I appreciate you watching uh, as always, and I hope I see you tomorrow.